Oshkosh Common Council meeting. Please call the roll. Ford. Here. Mugrower. Here. Hansen. Here. Miller. Wojciechowski. Here. Erickson. Here. O'Mary. Here. Present six. And Councilmember Ford will lead us in the invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. We ask for guidance tonight as we begin this meeting. May all those who participate in our discussions and our decisions reflect the values that we cherish in this great city. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> this evening we do have a proclamation and this is for November as Native American Heritage Month 2021. Mr. Dave Greenham, would you join me? <clears throat> Proclamation November as Native American Heritage Month 2021. Whereas the city of Oshkosh is enriched by the knowledge and history of indigenous people who were here before the city's establishment, we acknowledge the original inhabitants of this area, the Menominee and Ho-Chunk nations, this land encompasses the city of Oshkosh in the Lake Winnebago region. We honor these ancestral grounds and celebrate the resilience and strength that all indigenous people have shown. And whereas before European settlement, Native Americans lived throughout the land that is known as Wisconsin today, notably the Menominee Nation and the Ho-Chunk Nation, had long inhabited ancestral lands in and around what is now Oshkosh, which was named after the Menominee's chief Oshkosh. And whereas by the end of the treaty period in 1871, most Native Americans had been forced to live on reservations in an attempt to assimilate tribes, their youth were placed in boarding schools throughout the United States. Some youth as young as three years old were removed from their homes their language and their traditions in order to civilize them into the dominant society. As a result, this mistreatment left them with a legacy of historical trauma. And whereas the city of Oshkosh recognizes the atrocities that indigenous people endured as a result of European settlement and colonization, and whereas during Native American Heritage Month, we also honor our Native American veterans and service members who have courageously served and continue to serve in our armed forces. For over 200 years, Native Americans have defended our country during every major conflict and continue to serve at a higher rate than any other ethnic group in the nation. Because of their selflessness, every generation of Americans receives the precious gift of liberty. And we owe each of them and their families a debt of gratitude for their sacrifice and dedication. And whereas indigenous peoples living in Oshkosh represent many of the 12 tribes of Wisconsin, whereas each tribe has a unique history and culture, indigenous peoples in the city of Oshkosh represent an important and valued part of our community. Their history is our history. Now therefore I, Lori Palmieri, Mayor of the City of Oshkosh, do hereby proclaim the month of November, be recognized as Native American Heritage Month, and encourage residents of the city to learn more about the history of indigenous peoples and to celebrate their culture. I wanna thank you, um, Mayor Bill Mary, for the um, proclamation not only from the Menominee tribe, but all tribes here in the state of Wisconsin. Um, it is uh, Native Heritage Month, and we are here tonight to talk about the history of our people, the Menominees, of which we will be doing in a short, short while here. Thank you again. Thank you. We're waiting.
Next on the agenda are <clears throat> citizen statements to council. And this is our opportunity for citizen statements that are not related to specific agenda items. We have two public comment periods. Do we have anyone registered for citizen comments? No, we do not. All right, we will move on then to public comment on agenda items. Okay, for item number 20, resolution 21554, we have Thomas Fotek. Mr. Fotek, step right up. Welcome. I'm Welcome. really here just to answer any questions that you may have when that issue okay. is, is arises. So. All right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, for item number 21, um, resolution 21555, we have quite a few people. We'll start with Sister Mary Jo Salinsky. Yes, step right up. Welcome. I'm Mary Jo Salinsky, a sister of a new genesis in the Green Bay Diocese. I live here in Oshkosh, 2280 Patriot Lane, Unit D, uh, and I'm a member of Esther. I also want to mention that uh, one of the members of my community is a Native American from the Menominee Nation. So this is kind of personal for me. I'm here to address the City Council Resolution 21555, um, the Oshkosh Monument, the updated signage. And I'm asking you to support and approve the updated historic signage for the Chief Oshkosh statue in Menominee Park. The Menominee history is the right and responsibility of the Menominee Nation. And it's amazing to me that Oshkosh has a chance to promote some healing of the misrepresentation that has been done to the Menominee people. Approving the updated historic signage for the Chief Oshkosh statue would help to do just that. We see so much dishonesty in our political system today, and it seems to me that much of it is done to save face. It takes integrity to admit that, maybe by honest mistakes even, wrong interpretations were promoted in the past. I like to think there are people of integrity here in Oshkosh. Admitting that something in the past was incorrect makes one a bigger person, one to be looked up to, not a smaller one. Please approve the new historic signage and help the healing to happen. Oshkosh would be looked up to as a city brave enough to correct misrepresentations. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Keith Wolf, and then we have Elizabeth Lee. And please state your name and address yes. if you would. My name is Keith Wolf, K E I T H W O L F. And I live at 2314 Wisconsin Street here in Oshkosh. Um, I'm here as a private citizen, but for the record, I'm also a member of the Oshkosh Esther Work Group and a member of the Algoma Boulevard United Methodist Church. Welcome. The majority of the information that I'm about to share comes from the Oshkosh Public Museum website. The Menominee have lived in Wisconsin for over 10,000 years and their origin stories include no other place except Wisconsin. They claimed much of our state, and today many Wisconsin place names reflect that this was once the Menominee homeland. But the Menominee had little real choice in anything related to their future at the time of Chief Oshkosh under European colonialism and the newly formed United States government. The tribe had no power or no clout uh, in relation to the government. They were at the mercy of a powerful and domineering government. To acquire native land, the federal government intimidated, threatened, and deceived them. As we all know, in 1836, the Treaty of the Cedars, um, Oshkosh and the Menominee sold 4.2 million acres 
including all of their lands in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, for $620,000. Later, in the 1848 Treaty of Lake Poygan, Oshkosh and the Menominee sold their remaining lands in Wisconsin to the United States. And in exchange, the government offered them about 600,000 acres along the Crow Wing River in Minnesota, essentially eliminating the, the entire Menominee Nation from Wisconsin at that time. But Chief Oshkosh um, was expected to lead his tribe to Crow Wing River, but he and the other tribal leaders claimed that they had signed that treaty under pressure. And in 1852, they were allowed to stay on what was then a temporary reservation on the Wolf River in northeastern Wisconsin. And finally, in 1854, a treaty made this 250,000 acres of what was left a permanent reservation. Again, Chief Oshkosh signed that new treaty in, with great reluctance. The Menominee people did not abandon their identity through this process and they remained united, held together in part by the gift of the man we call Chief Oshkosh. Today, the Menominee continue to live on part of their ancestral homeland. The Menominee's continued and enduring presence in Wisconsin is a far greater accomplishment um, to Chief Oshkosh than just giving his name to the city, which is what the current plaque states. Again, according to the museum, and this is a quote, our identity as a people is tied to our history. Our shared story is the glue that binds us together as Americans, create unity, and gives our nation strength. Through peace, turmoil, and war, we draw on the knowledge that our country has seen worse, yet we endure. The Menominee kept their identity and culture and a small part of their ancestral homeland because of Chief Oshkosh's leadership. From all of this, you can see that the losses that the Menominee Nation has suffered over the years have been devastating. I believe the least we can do is let them tell their own story. I fully support all five plaques. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Elizabeth Lee, and then we have David, I'm sorry, David Gringdom. Welcome. Hi, my name is Beth Lee. My address is 3554 Bambi Lane, Oshkosh. I came here tonight to voice my support for the resolution to approve the updated signs for the Chief Oshkosh statue in Menominee Park. It's very encouraging to me to know that individuals from the Menominee Nation have contributed to the plaques since far too often their voices are not included, much less centered in conversations about our history. I've been to Menominee Park many times with my two-year-old daughter, and I hope as she grows up, these plaques can be talking points for us to discuss the history of Oshkosh. I didn't grow up in Oshkosh, and sadly had never taken time to research who Chief Oshkosh was after seeing the statue in Menominee Park. I was disappointed when I heard that there was a push to update the plaques because Chief Oshkosh looked nothing like the statue and he accomplished many things that he would likely be more proud of than having a city of mostly white people named after him. I was very happy to know that the city was looking to correct the information posted in the park. I urge you to vote in favor of all five plaques. Thank you. Mr. Grignot. Welcome. My name is David Greeno. I'm the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer for the Menominee Tribe. My Menominee name is Naukwa. That means when the sun is at mid-sky, and I'm from the Menominee Wolf Clan. My address is W2255, Joe Summers Road, Kishina, Wisconsin, on the Menominee Indian Reservation. I come here to speak about Chief Oshkosh and to try to give some of the true history of which we did 
and our work group who um, wrote the five plaques that are in question tonight. Uh, Chief Oshkosh, he was born at uh, Green Bay in the Old King's Village. And it was there that he had a start as a, uh, as a young man, as a leader, and soon became chief at the 1827 treaty at Butamore. It was there that the Menominees were without a head chief because of um, uh, some of them had passed away before him. So they needed a head chief to um, uh, take them through the treaty era. And it was Michigan Governor Lewis Cass who had asked the Menominees to present to them uh, someone that could lead them to the treaty era. And the peace medal was hung on Chief Oshkosh at Butamore. Was there that Chief Oshkosh then had the responsibility to speak for the Menominee people in negotiating the treaties. And I can only imagine what he had went through in having to give up so much land. And, and it was, much, much of it was by force because if the Menominees didn't negotiate, they would have took, taken away from us anyway. So he would always try to make the best of it. The Menominee signed seven treaties with the U.S. government. And the treaties of 1831 through 1854, Oshkosh did speak for the Menominee people. But it wasn't until the, the Treaty of 1848 that the Wisconsin was wanted to become a, a state. And they wanted the rest of, the government wanted the rest of uh, the Menominee's land. And in, in exchange, it would give uh, 600,000 acres in uh, Minnesota Kerr Wing. But Oshkosh was reluctant to sign this treaty. He said, I, I have to go over there and see if this land you promised us. And he and the delegation of chiefs went over to Kerr Wing. And they looked at the land and it wasn't land that they had promised. Two warring tribes, they were Ojibwe and Sioux, uh, he didn't want no part of that. And the resources they promised weren't there. Came back and he told, told the people, we will not move, we will go to Washington, he said, and speak to President Fillmore. He and a delegation of chiefs went to Washington. And it was said that Oshkosh spoke almost two hours to President Fillmore to an interpreter, trying to convince the president that the Menominee should stay in her ancestral territory. It wasn't to, to um, it was from this uh, negotiation that Menominees were uh, said to stay at uh, Lake Poygan until he made a decision president. And he finally did. And the Menominees were granted a reservation on a Wolf River, a place that nobody wanted, but our people under Oshkosh, he said, I know this territory. Our people know what, let, let us live there. And that is our reservation today. The wilderness is the trees that they were talking about. And we still have those trees on our reservation that we take care of, but of which the philosophy of Chief Oshkosh, he said to him, they, they will always be sustained if we uh, do this type of forest management of which he he brought forth, and it's called sustained yield today. But I just wanted to say that Chief Oshkosh's legacy is not given the name, his name to the city of Oshkosh. It is the Menominee people that uh, came after him and who are living today on the Menominee Reservation, and some live off. But I wanted to um, come here tonight and speak about that. And, um, ask and recommend that the five plaques of Chief, Scott, Chief Oshkosh uh, Memorial be um, approved here tonight. Oh, my man. Thank you. 
Okay, Aaron Shearer and then Guy Ryder. Welcome. Good evening. My name is Aaron Shear. I live at 1720 Cliffview Drive in Oshkosh. I'm here to speak in support of the resolution concerning the signage for the Chief Oshkosh Monument. I wrote a letter to the council, and I'm not going to reiterate all of that to you, but I wanted to share a couple of additional thoughts <clears throat> that I also shared with the Landmarks uh, Commission. As the director of the Paint Arts Center and Gardens, I am automatically an ex officio member of the Landmarks Commission. And in this capacity, I receive all of their agendas and minutes. For the nearly 20 years that I have been the director of the Paint, I have followed the activities and, uh, and decisions of the Commission because I respect and admire their important work in preserving Oshkosh's history. In considering the signage for the Chief Oshkosh Monument, I was struck by how unique this project was for the Commission. Their work has almost exclusively focused on preserving the structures and stories of European immigrants and their descendants in Oshkosh. The membership of the Commission itself is also um, has the perspectives and represents that of European descendants. The proposed Chief Oshkosh signage was perhaps the first time the Commission was asked to represent the history and perspective of the people who are indigenous to the land that is now Oshkosh. Importantly, the language of the signage was shaped by Menominee citizens and shares their history from their perspective. Also, the signage was reviewed by the city's new Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee, which, which represents the uh, perspective of diverse citizens in Oshkosh. I believe we are incredibly fortunate to have the participation of the Menominee citizens and the DEI committee, and I feel we should listen to what they have told us. Like I asked the Landmarks Commission, I asked the council to hear and respect their perspectives, which are different from that of the majority of us who are European descendants. The other thing I wanted to share with the commission was a brief personal story. <clears throat> Nearly 20 years ago, when I applied for and was offered my job at the Payne, I had no idea what the character of the community was like. As a gay person, it was especially important to me that the community was receptive to diverse people. In trying to get a sense of the climate of the community, I read the Oshkosh Northwestern online. At that time, Oshkosh was grappling with the Indian mascot of West High School. And even though it was very contentious, ultimately the school board voted to abandon the mascot. This made a big impression on me. It sent a strong message that Oshkosh was able to grapple with a controversial issue related to diversity and to make a difficult decision respecting the perspective of people who are not the majority of the community. Remarkably, that was 20 years ago. Now Oshkosh has another opportunity to respect the perspective of the indigenous people of this region. I believe we, as a community, should listen to the wishes of the Menominee people. I believe we should do this simply because it's the right thing for us to do, but I also want to point out that this, this decision says a lot about the character of our community. Do we truly listen to people who are not the majority? Are we open to and respectful of the experiences and views of diverse people? Can we learn from the past and from one another and try to do better. I believe this is the kind of community that we should continue to strive to be. I encourage you to vote in favor of the new signage for the Chief Oshkosh Monument. Thank you. Thank you. Guy Ryder, and then we have Arnold Shovelbreeze. Is Anaquit here? Okay. Anaquit, are you there with us? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, welcome, Poso. Yeah, Poso, sorry I couldn't be there in person. But I, I wanted to uh, just add my uh, comments. <clears throat> um, I wanted to uh, introduce myself in our language. When, uh, when I'll start in, uh, in our language. 
Anakwitna Tekam, Wapasha Nito Tam, Kashikna, and Nitsky Wakian, Wan and Maoni Wake Osaitua. My English name is uh, Guy Ryder. My uh, real name is Anakwit, and I'm the executive director of a nonprofit um, called Mini Konakim, located here on the Menominee Indian Reservation. Um, I'm really just wanting to comment and, and add to others' comments tonight um, in support of these plaques. Um, I think it's a, a noble um, opportunity and, and venture that the city of Oshkosh um, has before them to, to really listen to the to the voice of the Menominee people and, and uh, do what we all know is right and, and hopefully portray our uh, respected um, chief in, in a good light. So uh, I just wanted to add, uh, hopefully, that you guys will vote for all five plaques and, and we can move forward and, and uh, really uh, bring the voice to uh, our statue, the Chief Oshkosh. Thank you. Thank you. OK, Arnold Chevalries. Arnold Chevalier. Welcome. Poso, my name is Osawa Namaki. I belong to the Eagle Clan. Madam Mayor, members of the council, um, on behalf of my two colleagues who have worked very diligently to bring this to this point, um, I rise in support of these five plaques. And I think that in approving these tonight, that is our wish. I feel that we will have start start a, a new era in, in our relationship, that our both of our communities um, can move forward, and that these, uh, these plaques will bring more and more of that throughout the state of Wisconsin. Um, I want you to know that we've worked diligently with other your other committees, standing committees, um, and to try and resolve our differences and our issues in a, in a good, respectful manner. And uh, I, I truly, truly believe that this is a, a great moment for us, um, both communities, to, to move forward. And I thank you very much for your consideration. Um, and I'd like to say well, and in closing. We'll wait in. Our next speaker is Jennifer Considine, and then we have Shirley Brabender Maddox. Good evening. I'm Jennifer Considine. I live at 300 Dale Avenue, and I'm also here to speak in support of the five plaques. I wanted to come as a citizen of Oshkosh tonight to thank the people of the Menominee Nation for the gifts of these plaques to our city. I run by the statue at least three times a week and I often have my kids with me. And I remember last summer my 11 year old stopped at the statue and he looked at it and he goes, yeah, that's not right. And he looked at the plaque and he started talking about what he'd learned at school about forestry and how Chief Oshkosh had been a leader in that area and a leader of his peoples. And he said, and I don't think he looked anything like that statue. And I thought, well, I didn't know that and I should have known that. Right? And what a great moment for my kid to educate me. And then an opportunity for me to say, I didn't know that. And I'm really glad to learn that tonight. And I think we have the opportunity as a city to offer that education to a lot of people, a lot of us who, who need to know more about the gifts that we have received from the Menominee Nation. So I'm glad to see these five plaques here tonight. And I encourage you to support them and embrace the opportunity for our city to really speak in apology and in partnership with the Menominee Nation. Thank you. Thank you. Shirley. Oh, there she is. Good evening. My name is Shirley Brabender Maddox. I live at 1313 Jackson Street. 
Good evening, City Council. Good evening, tribal members. Welcome. I have been the chairman of the Landmarks Commission during the last six years in which the project came to us to rectify the, in the inscription on the uh, statue um, at Menominee Park to uh, Chief Oshkosh. And we felt immediately that if the story was to be told, because there was nothing there that said anything about Chief Oshkosh, that we would ask if the tribe would tell their story about their chief and their story. And they graciously invited us. David, thank you. Twice we came up to visit with him at Kashina, and we learned so much. I'm going to, the next part, I'm going to kind of channel President Biden with his rather unfortunate um, encounter with President Macron dealing with the um, Australian submarines. And he said, um, what we did was rather clumsy. It was not done with a lot of grace. And I think over the six years, there were gaps and pauses and um, who was doing what? And then we had COVID for 18 months. We didn't meet several of our members on the commission do not have computers, so it was kind of a, a lull. But anyway, that was where we lacked in grace. I always anticipated that this would be educational. Having been a teacher for 35 years, um, education, learning, dialogue um, is very important. And um, so, um, I was hoping that in the messages we would find healing and hope. And the healing for the, um, the hurt and the weight of pain, hundreds and hundreds of years of pain that the tribe have felt. In, they are the only people, <coughs> tribes, that always were here. Other tribes came in, but this was their land. And so that pain of, of the loss. And so um, I was just hoping that besides learning, that we would approach healing. And in the fifth plaque, there are two sentences, the two final sentences. And I'm going to read them because I think they're important. It says, the fifth plaque, the five plaques now surrounding the monument Celebrate the life and culture of an important chief of the Menominee Nation. They have been placed here in the hope of promoting the forms of education and dialogue that are necessary steps in the process of healing. I think it is important that when visitors come to this spot, it's on the highest little knoll. We don't have many knolls on Lake Winnebago, but it's a higher spot. Um, that they, as they read these plaques, that they will realize that they were written by and approved by the Menominee Nation. I think that's very important. It wasn't the Landmarks Commission that wrote the story. It was the tribe. It was his people that wrote them. I didn't think I'd have a chance to personally thank David Grignon and the tribal members. I, I have my thank you written in here, but I'd like to thank you personally for the meetings and the workshops that you attended, for all the times that you spent writing and meeting with consultants and dealing with probably a difficult old woman who wanted to honor you and your chief, but wanted to make sure that it would be healing for, for you. Um, I'd also like to thank, at the last minute, Rebecca Comfort came to our last workshop, and she is the liaison from the Wisconsin Historical Society to the 12 First Nations. 
and she graciously facilitated our last meeting and it ended with a good result. Um, I'd like to thank the city staff and the city manager who have set meetings and enabled us to have hybrid meetings, which they usually don't allow, to enable this to reach a good conclusion. And so I recommend to the city council that you approve the Chief Oshkosh project because I believe that it will provide hope and healing and provide a chance for dialogue and education between the people that live here now and those whose land was here for thousands of years. Thank you. Thank you. I have no further individuals registered. So that concludes our consent, I'm sorry, our public comments on agenda items. Um, we do have consent agenda next. Uh, before we go on to consent agenda, I'd like to introduce a, a motion to reorder the agenda uh, to allow for 21555 uh, to uh, be permitted first before we go on with the rest of the agenda. I'll second that. Any discussion on the motion? Please take the roll. Ford? Aye. Wugerauer? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Wojciechowski? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Carried six. All right, so we will redirect to item 21555, approve historic signage for Chief Oshkosh Monument in Menominee Park. Landmarks Commission and Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee recommend approval. Do I have a motion? I do I have a second? Second. Discussion? We need a motion first. I'll, so move. I'll make the motion. Second. second. There you go. All right. Motion by Wojciechowski, second by Mugra, uh, Lindsay Erickson. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Need discussion? <laughs> Council Member Erickson. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who has spoken tonight. Um, I know this, this has been a long and sometimes difficult process, um, but I think it's important that we're finally kind of coming to terms of, of our history as a city um, and the land that we occupy. Um, this isn't just about history, this is current. Uh, the Menominee people are here, and it's about time that we recognize all of their contributions to the city. So just wanted to say thank you. Council Member Ford. Yep, same deal. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for all of the uh, emails. Um, I responded um, in a way I'll share with all of you as well. I'm, I'm voting yes. Um, I look at it this way. We have a statue here that is part of Oshkosh's history, uh, but it's an inaccurate portrayal of Chief Oshkosh and his accomplishments. So we could remove the statue because it's inaccurate, or we can keep it and acknowledge the problem in a way that's supported by the Menominee Nation. So I'm really glad we got to the, this point of a constructive compromise, even though the road was bumpy. Uh, sometimes healing takes that. Um, so again, thank you to everyone who worked on this. Are there council members? I too would just like to express um, thank you and gratitude to the Menominee Tribe for their patience and sharing of their time and knowledge, um, especially uh, Historic Preservation Officer Dave Grignan and Arnold Chevalier and Co-Chairman Doug Cox, uh, UW Oshkosh Intertribal Student Organization, um, Dennis Zack, Dr. Pascal Manning, and especially to, as uh, Shirley indicated, uh, Rebecca Comfort for coming in here towards the end to help facilitate. And especially the uh, Landmarks Commission and Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Commission. And finally, the citizens of Oshkosh for um, taking this opportunity. So thank you all. It's, thank you, it doesn't seem enough for, for all the work that's gone in. All right, are we ready to take the call? Take the roll? Please call the vote. Ford? Aye. Wugerower? Aye. Hansen? Aye. 
Wojciechowski? Aye. Erickson? Aye. O'Mary? Aye. Carried six. All right. The resolution is passed. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> We'll just take a brief pause while the chambers dissipate. Travels. All right, our next item on the agenda is consent. We'll take a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Any discussion on consent agenda? Please call the roll. Board? Aye. Mugaror? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Wojciechowski? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Carried six. All right, we'll now move on to new ordinances. The first new ordinance that we have, uh, there will be no action this evening. That's ordinance 21-549, approve zone change from institutional district to single family residential, SR5 for property located at 330, 338 North Eagle Street, plan commission recommends approval. Again, there will be no action on that. This will come back to council at the next meeting. And our next new ordinance, 21-550, reverse direction of traffic flow on the one-way pair of Central Street and Kentucky Street from West Nevada Avenue to West New York Avenue. Staff recommends to waive the rules and adopt them first reading. Do we have a motion? Madam Mayor, I'll move to waive the rules and adopt on first reading. Second. All right, any discussion on the motion to waive the rules? Please call the roll. Ford? Aye. Mugarower? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Wojciechowski? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Carried six. And now we uh, need a motion on the ordinance, 21-550. So moved. Second. Any discussion on the ordinance? All right, please call the roll. Ford? Aye. Mugarower? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Wojciechowski? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Carried six. All right, next we have a pending ordinance 21551, amend chapter eight to eliminate auctioneers and direct solicitation license requirements and to revise regulations pertaining to persons directly soliciting within the city of Oshkosh. So moved. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Ford? Aye. Mugarower? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Wojciechowski? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Carried six. All right, we will move to new resolutions. Resolution 21 552 amend the City of Oshkosh fee schedule pertaining to parking permit fees for city owned lots. Do we have a motion? I mean, a motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. Discussion on 21-552. Council Member Ford. I just want to ask a, a quick question to city staff, just to confirm that I'm reading this correctly, that we have not mo modified these um, 
rates since 1984? Yeah, that that's basically the um, the current fees were put in place by ordinance in 1984, um, and we can't find anything more recent. So that's that's what we believe to be true. Okay, I'm tempted to ask Rusk about inflation numbers, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Just going to leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you. All right, no further discussion. Please call the roll on 21-552. Ford? Aye. Ugerower? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Wojciechowski? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried six. All right, next is resolution 21-553, approved development agreement with North Point Development Corporation for redevelopment of Smith School. So moved. Second. Discussion. Councilmember Wojciechowskin. Thank you. Um, do we have someone here from developer? I have a question. Um, and this is this is later on in the process. I'm not even sure if maybe this is what you deal with, but um, when this uh, project is completed, um, is it uh, is it North Point? The yeah North Point. Are they who is in charge of uh, like facilitating the building? Like who is in charge of the application process, you know, like when people start wanting to actually move into this place once it's done. So they have a, a the project's getting tax credits from WIDA. Okay. So you got to have a qualified property management firm. I believe it's ACC property management is who they use. I'm, I'm not sure exactly who it is, but it's somebody that, ha that has to go through training to make sure that they're qualifying all the, the people that will intend on living there kind of thing, validating that they are low-income folks. Okay, and has that, that group already been approved? Or? Oh, yeah. Okay. They, they manage all their properties in, around the Fox Valley area. Okay, and maybe this is a question for them, but I'm just going to pose it um, in case maybe you do have an answer for this. But um, I had been getting inquiries from people, um, you know, in the community wondering, um, one, the application to apply to live there, is there a fee and is there a background check that is conducted when applying to live there? Do you know that off the top of your head? Unfortunately, I don't. Okay, that's all right. I, I just pose that question because, you know, this has become something that's been emerging um, and maybe this is more for council, um, an issue that's kind of been emerging around the country and in the state where, you know, that is a barrier um, to access and if we're, promoting affordable living like this building is, that's something that I'd hope we'd look at in the future, um, if that is, in fact, something that they are doing. So that's all I had. Thank you. Do other council members have questions for Tim? <coughs> all right. Please call the roll. Ford? Aye. Mugerauer? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Wojciechowski? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Homeri? Aye. Carried six. All right, next we have a new, new resolution, 21554, approve one year agreement with Greater Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhoods Incorporated. So moved. Second. So, discussion. Kelly Nyforth, would you like to give a summary of this proposed contract? Absolutely. Uh, typically, in the past, the city of Oshkosh has entered into a three-year agreement with the Greater Oshkosh uh, Neighborhood Group, um, and they are our boots to the ground um, folks that really work with all the different neighborhood associations and city staff and other organizations throughout the city. Right now, they are looking at adjusting their strategic plan, and part of that is just um, based on market conditions with what originally they had set out to do. Um, so when they're looking at their strategic plan, they're also going to be looking for other funding sources and other ways to sustain the organization. So with that, they are just requesting a one-year contract um, with hopes that this coming year in 2022, um, they can work on a plan and come back. And I believe they want to have a workshop with council in early 2022 to discuss some of their ideas. And um, then I think they would be willing to look at uh, another longer-term three-year contract in the future starting in 2023. All right, um, Kelly, while you're here, um, if I could ask uh, for council pleasure, um, we received the one Oshkosh 
our neighborhoods engaged strategic plan the 2017 through 2020 and I know that um, community development has been working on that uh, for some time as far as an update um, kind of delayed maybe with the housing study and um, and different things but could sure. you talk a little bit about that that was actually approved by council the um, I believe is 21 to 2024 20, plan um, council approved that 70 in March of this year so that was approved earlier this year. Oh, the update was? Yep, the one Oshkosh strategic okay. plan was approved in March Through of this year. Through 2024? Yeah. Um, so in your opinion, does that match up with what the strategic plan is that's changing for GoHNI, given it, that we may be reshaping things with this housing study that's coming down the pike? It does. I believe for a year, um, I think it's a good fit. It aligns with the goals that they have in the one Oshkosh plan, and then the goals that they're working in their strategic plan. And then as I'm working um, with them, I'm also taking a look at the city strategic plan too, to ensure that it meets the, um, the goals of our plan. Um, we're, as I think I had mentioned at the last couple meetings, we have a draft city um, housing study. So my guess is in early 22, we'll be looking at that and really prioritizing what um, projects we want to be working on in 2022 and out. So I think the timing might be right to then um, work with Go H and I to see what they could help with um, moving forward in 2023. Very good. So then this agreement removes the requirement as I understand it, for them to acquire real estate and uh, rehab, whereas the former required that. Is that correct? That is correct. For this, just this one year? Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Other council members, any questions for Mr. Fortick? Welcome, Tom. Good to see you again in, in a new role. Um, I don't know if you'd like to come up and just say a few words. Thank you for listening to Kelly. She made a very good presentation. I don't want to say too much because I'll just undercut what she said. But uh, we really value our relationship with the city. Um, the planning staff's been extremely supportive of us. And I think that um, we're at a point, the maturity of our organization is such that we really need to look at why we are what we are. Uh, the real estate market kind of kicked us in the head and really made us think about how do we want to proceed from here. And I think that. Um, for us, this one-year agreement makes a lot of sense because it gives us time to work with Kelly and her staff to really figure out what's the best way forward for us. Um, and keep in mind that for us, um, a big part of what we do is the creation of the, of the neighborhood organizations. We're up to 20, uh, thanks to the you guys approving one uh, last month. Uh, and I think there's room for some real growth there. But we don't have, currently have a neighborhood organization on the south side. So we're really working with some leads we have there. So those are the kinds of things we really want to focus on. But we need to be thinking more strategically long term, which is why we prefer the one-year agreement for now. Very good. Thank you so much. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank Deputy you. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, no, I just wanted to say, uh, and you alluded to it, but um, it takes a lot for, for your organization to, to acknowledge that maybe you know, the intended purpose when you started isn't exactly where you are right now and that it, there, you're in an inflection point maybe that um, it's time to look at that and do a deep dive. And I, so I respect that, that acknowledgement. I think a one-year deal is, um, uh, is fair to both sides and it's a good thing to do. Uh, I love the relationship that mm -hmm. the city and GoH&I has. And, um, you know, uh, strengthening our neighborhoods is, is a, uh, very important to our strategic plan. Uh, and you guys are doing doing a, a good job at that. On a, uh, my own personal note, I. Glad to hear that the real estate part, um, maybe for at least this year, is out of you know out of your purview for a little bit. I think it's something that um, uh, you're just the organization itself uh, doesn't excel at, and right. if you're not going to be good at it, um, we should probably stop doing it. So I appreciate the acknowledgement of that part of it as well. That uh, even though it was something that we asked you to do, you know, originally, that going forward it may not be the best thing. Right. So Thank just you. just wanted to acknowledge those things. Also, speaking selfishly, it's my eighth day on the job. That too. I so, so, to, so I'm like, I think it, take I it as, take it as, taking a step back is a good opportunity for me to say, okay, let's let's really look at this. I did mean to acknowledge that I was going to start there. I, I jumped right in, but uh, that's I've been on the board, well. but it's not the same thing. Let me tell you. There's nothing like baptism by fire, yeah. right? <laughs> so, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Well, I was inclined to um, uh, make a motion to. 
uh, look at six months. Um, but I, I think that the new leadership may be a fresh start uh, there. And obviously your experience on the board, you, you're well suited to that role. So I appreciate that and uh, I'll be supporting it. Other council members? All right, please call the roll. Ford. Aye. Mugerower. Aye. Hansen. Aye. Miller. Aye. Wojciechowski. Aye. Erickson. Aye. Palmieri. Aye. Carried seven. All right, we are at 21.556. Having moved 21.555 up to the beginning, we will move on to 21556, approve Gulf War Memorial Monument at South Park War Memorial Area. Advisory Park Board recommends approval. So moved. Second. Discussion? Council Member Ford. Yeah, I just wanna say thank you to the Vietnam Veterans of America for, uh, for donating the cost of this monument. I mean, this, these were wars that impacted a heck of a lot of people in my generation, and it's nice to see it acknowledged. All right, please call the roll. Ford? Aye. Mugerower? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Miller? Aye. Wojciechowski? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Carried seven. And next we have uh, resolution 21 558. Adopt, or I'm sorry, 557. Approve 2022 Business Improvement District Operating Plan and Budget. One hundred forty thousand dollars, six hundred and ten. So moved. Second. Discussion. Any discussion on the bid budget? All right. Please call the roll. Ford. Aye. Google Aye. Hansen. Aye. Miller. Aye. Wojciechowski. Aye. Erickson. Aye. Palmieri. Aye. Carried seven. And 21558 adopt 2022 annual operating budget and establish the property tax levy for the city of Oshkosh. So moved. Second. Discussion. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, first, I just want to start with just a little bit of a thank you to city staff, to City Manager Roloff and the finance director and his team. Um, just for leading us through this process. It's a long process, uh, even for us, and you guys have been doing it many, mo many more months than we were a part of it. Um, many more meetings and, and hours put into it, but the, um, the work product that you've put into it and, and that we've gotten out of it is, is a good, good outcome, and I appreciate the efforts. Uh, and that goes to, the, obviously, the, the departments and department heads and um, on down the chain, too. So just wanted to acknowledge the, the hard work. It's not a quick and easy process. Um, no budget's ever perfect. Uh, uh, every one of us up here would probably like to see more in certain areas and less in certain areas. That's a given fact. Um, but in the end, this is us coming together and saying this is what best moves us forward, meets our strategic plan goals, and um, keeps the city of Oshkosh moving forward. So I'll, of course, be supportive of it. Um, there is one thing that, you know, it'll get noted in the media, the, the increase, in, and it's not uh, to go without talking about. Um, you know, we're looking at a, we're going to be approving a, a 4.62% change from last year. That's a big number. I acknowledge that. Um, one thing I just would like to note that um, most of that, well over 4%, is tied to uh, our people. And that's absolutely something I support. Uh, this is um, cost of living increases, uh, contractual um, uh, raises, as well as the big driver, health insurance. Um, as with everybody, uh, everybody experiences that in the private sector, but uh, in the public se sector, it's, it's public knowledge and we get to talk about it a little bit. So just wanted to acknowledge that most of this increase is driven by um, the, our, main, um, our main resource, it's our people, and um, fully supportive of, of, uh, of the budget we're going to put forth here to, to improve things here in the city. So with that, I'll turn it back. Council Member Ford. No, uh, well said, Deputy Mayor. I'll, I'll echo that. Uh, those thanks. Um, budget's the most important thing we do. It's the contract between the government and the governed. Um, a good budget's developed via a transparent and inclusive process. It's easy to understand. It reflects the values of the community. I think this budget does that. 
Um, a few highlights, we keep funding core services, police, fire, EMS, streets, parks, all the things that we take for granted, but the things that make Oshkosh a quality place to live. We do keep the levy at a reasonable rate. Um, we started with a goal of uh, setting it between four and 5%, and, and we hit that. And I think more important, we hit that without budgetary tricks um, that would cause long-term uh, financial problems. Um, we keep our overall debt and debt service in check. And every year, we keep uh, improving the presentation of our budget. I, I want to give a shout out to um, Finance Director Van Kampel on that. Um, every year, the document gets more interactive and more actively transparent. That should hopefully help build faith in this process. I want to acknowledge some of the things we didn't fund as well. Um, I think that's the hardest part. It's just part of the reality of having limited resources and infinite needs. Uh, two things in particular that came up at our, uh, some of our enhancement uh, discussion. Um, the fire department's request for an assistant uh, battalion chief. It didn't happen this time, but we'll have to remember the need is still there. Um, second, late in the process, we had a brief discussion about a diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator. Uh, my hope, and really I think my expectation, is that we'll see uh, city staff request a position at some point in the future, a position that has clear authority, clear lines of reporting, adequate funding, and a charge that sets them up to succeed. Um, as we move forward with integrating some of those equity metrics into the budget process, I'm confident the charge will get there. Um, and this reflects my commitment to process. And I admit I'm big on process. That's boring. Um, <laughs> Councilman Miller's laughing at me because he gives me a hard time on that. But right, it's really easy to hear process and be cynical and view process as an excuse not to act. But process in government is what makes sure that we're being fair, make sure that we're being equitable. It leads to sustainable, lasting success. And I will gladly uh, trade immediate term criticism for long-lasting long change. I mean, any day of the week, I'll take that, that, that bargain. Um, this budget is the result of a well-defined process, and it sets up Oshkosh for success long term. Um, it'll be that commitment to the process that makes the things that are funded tonight work. It'll also make the things that aren't funded tonight reality in the future. So I'm very pleased to be voting in support of this tonight. Councilmember Miller. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I echo the sentiments of, of Mike and Matt, uh, the staff did a great job, but I, I feel like the council itself did an amazing job with this budget working together. There was no strife there. Uh, everybody communicated well. So I want to thank my council members. Um, this, this is the best we've ever worked together and, uh, I would like to see that continue. So thank you to each and every one of you for, for, uh, doing some real hard work on this and making this happen. So thank you all. And I'd also like to uh, join the chorus there on the thank yous. That's a gratitude evening because this is, as was pointed out, the hardest, I think, and the most challenging um, effort that, that council does. I mean, most folks may not realize, but we're working from home and, uh, you know, no designate, designated offices or phones or assistance here at City Hall, but certainly all the professional work that is done by staff is uh, greatly appreciated in informing and um, executing uh, this particular piece of our responsibility as well. So um, I'm very grateful for that. And uh, I just have one little house housekeeping request before we vote on the budget, and that is um, perhaps you know some opportunity for some additional improvements uh, might be uh, some symbols that relate to um, an equity component when we have items in the budget and or an environmentally friendly component related to climate mitigation. I mean, I think a number of us are feeling the pressure of nine years and keeping things at 1.5 um, in terms of the temperature. And uh, I think that would be helpful to folks who have requested uh, from us uh, what we are doing towards climate change and equity as just some visual symbols within the uh, budget document, both operational and CIP. So that would just be appreciated if we can talk about that and in preparation for next year when we get to do it again. So thank you, folks. Please call the roll on the budget. Ford? Aye. <coughs> Mugerauer? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Miller? Aye. Wojciechowski? Aye. <clears throat> Erickson? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried seven. And our last new resolution is 21559, approved financing for the 2022 capital improvement projects. 
So moved. Second. Any discussion on the CIP? Please call the roll. Ford? Aye. Mugerower? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Miller? Aye. Wojciechowski? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Carried seven. Council discussion direction to city manager and future agenda items. Do council members have any future agenda items they'd like to discuss? Future meetings, future workshops. Looks like we do have the facilities planning workshop for December 14th at 5 p.m. Um, I do want to bounce back to future meetings. Uh, Deputy Mayor, I think we have a post council uh, city manager review. Yep, November 23rd. Uh, uh, we'll be going to closed session after the regularly scheduled council meeting um, to discuss the city manager's review. All right, thank you. And we are at potential uses of American Rescue Plan Act ARPA funds. City Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, what uh, staff uh, did was prepare a couple summaries for council's review. This is not for, a, this isn't even close to being an approval, but uh, it does give you an idea. I think there were some ex concerns, rightful concerns expressed by council uh, about the danger of piecemealing uh, our way to spend uh, ARPA money, and that was not the intent, but certainly uh, it was a, a cause for concern. Uh, staff split the, uh, the allocation, similar to what council had directed us in their resolution recently, 75% infrastructure, 25% non-infrastructure. So to, it, it was basically to give you a rough idea of where we were leaning, but also to give you an idea of trying to keep and maximize council's flexibility. And one thing I think I've seen through this process is that there may be a tendency to, well, let's spend it or at least allocate it. But I think there are still so many things going on. And you know, even if you disagree with some of the things we have there, as you get later years, we're, we're, we're more general with our descriptions or at least our I don't know if allocation or I would prefer to call them reservations, Reser reserve monies for future purposes. So we gave you a general uh, description of each of the categories that are in there. Um, Mr. Van Gompel did the, uh, the, the, the nice looking colorful one uh, with the, the numbers, but you'll see in the blue, uh, and this is on page 223 of the agenda, um, what was there, the blue ones were what was already approved by the council, which really precipitated your, your comments. That's 50900 But then we identified projects that I had outlined in uh, my cover letter to council with the budget that were not, uh, that were in the CIP but weren't funded. Again, that's consistent with council's direction because council's direction was this stuff should be in the CIP before we start uh, proposing it. So there's approximately $2,631,000. We will bring these back for your formal approval. I will tell you specifically, if, uh, if I want to stay alive with my police and my fire chief, I am, will be bringing the radios to you at the very next meeting. Um, so that's just, for the, so there's no surprises. The other ones we will be bringing up very shortly. But in the short run, I want to show you things that we're specifically going to talk about. And then as we get later in time, I'm being more general because I think it's a matter of we'll know it when we get to it, but we're not there yet. And really, I'm talking about, um, you know, the, the green areas are things that we're thinking we're going to be doing in the next, within the next year. So about 3 million of the 20 million we anticipate allocating within the next 12 months. The rest of it is really about future consideration. And that's everything that Mr. Van Gompel pointed out in the tan areas. And there's less detail because it's more about reservations. We know that we're going to need some IT and security projects. Uh, the police department has done a thorough evaluation of all our facilities from a security lens. And they're making some recommendations that have been going through staff. Um, we're not there yet, but we, those are things that are legitimate we need to do. Um, and I would say that if it wasn't for ARPA, I would still be coming to you with these recommendations because these are our needs that we're going to have to address IT and security needs. 
Similarly, we've identified some projects that are currently identified in the CIP that the council just approved. You just approved the 22 budget. 23, 24, we've got a series of projects. We're specifically itemizing them here because they are not funded based on our uh, the, the, the way we presented it to you. Similarly, we have two, um, two, the last two lines are the biggest lines. The last two lines are, you know, uh, 13 of the, or 14, excuse me, 14 million of the, uh, of the entire 20 million. What are we going to do with 2023 and 2024 financing? You will be approving it about 52 weeks from right now. So to give you an idea, the council said for 23, you wanted to limit borrowing to 15 million. So Mr. Van Goppel and I said, okay, with 15 million, we're projecting a borrowing level as high as $21 million. Roughly, we're about 6 billion short. So we're saying, well, keep that on the, keep that on your radar. We may need as much as $6 million. Council could say, well, maybe we won't, maybe we'll do a little more than 15 million. I'm not going to ask you to do that tonight. That would be, that would be inappropriate. But just keep on the radar that that's a possibility. And then, furthermore, uh, for 2024, we're anticipating a shortfall of eight and a quarter million. And if you saw something in the CIP you'd like to move up, you can add that number on top of that. So we're giving you an idea that to keep borrowing at 15 million is going to be a challenge. Um, when we do the facilities analysis with you at the workshop on uh, December 14th, you're going to get a good feel for what some of our facility needs are. That was one of the goals council gave me, and we're going to be basically this year is setting it up to say here are all of our congregate needs, but it's we got a long ways to go. So I'm not anticipating we're going to be coming with anything more on the infrastructure side than what you see in green before you right now. Um, it may change 100,000 or so, plus or minus, but we're in this ballpark. Council Member Ford. Just two quick questions. So you're bringing this up to us today because we asked for it. Each of these items will be something we'll have the opportunity to vote on. Everything you're gonna vote on, nothing, and you've already voted on the stuff in the blue, so the next thing you're gonna see is probably the next thing with the green, and you know I'm bringing the radios. Oh yeah, I just want to make that clear because I had a couple members of the public worried that this money's being approved tonight and that they're missing out on something. So I want to make that clear. And then to the radios, just real quick. So has the the, the ship sailed? I was going to say the ship flow, but uh, has the ship sailed on the county? Um, helping us with those? Pretty much, okay. it's 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 shit. It's sailed. I, uh, neither chief. Uh, I know Chief Smith is available. He's on online, but no, the county is not. Uh, given any indication. I thought maybe with some of the smaller townships. Yeah. I spoke with the uh, um, town of Algoma and they're staring down about a half million dollar expenditure. So they're that, you know, that small department with all of their paid on call folks, they got a half million dollars in radios. Chief Stanley has 689,000, but they issue a radio to each and every volunteer, whether that person goes to one fire call or every fire call. So they've got some expenditures i was hoping that that was going to help leverage it for us just I, just following up i on gave it, it a shot it. Yep, yep thank you for trying yeah um so that's that's the infrastructure side of things on the not on the non-infrastructure side that's the following page 224. it's much less it's only a little it's a little over five million one hundred twenty eight thousand dollars the only one i specifically identified uh at this time is the day-by-day -day warming shelter i will tell you that County Executive Damel and I have been working uh, together about the state uh, ARPA funds that they've been requesting, the neighborhood. Um, investment. Neighborhood in, investment. Thank you, thank you, the neighborhood investment. I keep forgetting. But anyway, the deadline is Thursday. Our staff's been working with county folks. Uh, we're gonna be submitting something on Thursday. And uh, I know the county's gonna be submitting something for day by day. So. This is really about a not to exceed for us or an up to amount, um, depending on what happens with the county. The county is going to be making some applications relative to day by day and tiny homes. We will not submit to the state for those two because the county's doing that. We didn't want to have overlap. Similarly, we're going to be pursuing COTS and other homeless initiatives. And Ms. Nyforth and her staff have been 
scrambling the last three weeks to meet this deadline. I really appreciate that. So after the day by day up to a million dollars, other homeless initiatives, uh, whether it's tiny homes or cots or something else, just reserving it, not saying let's do, we're going to do it. I don't even want to, I, I dare even mention them by name because that can change as well. Then everything else is about just kind of steering it into a, a certain column, but not approving it. A million eight seventy five for housing and nonprofit assistance with a potential county state match. Ms. Nyforth and her staff have been identifying some things that can be done. A good example is assistance to people that are seeking housing funds. One of the things we've learned through this process is currently there are adequate funds available for people to get rental assistance. The application side of things is a little tough. If anything comes out first, it'll probably be that uh, I, I anticipate coming to you saying, I think we need to help the advocates of the world help process these applications. I don't think we're going to need to use any of our money for direct rental assistance because that money's there, just the administrative overhead's not there. So that's what I predict. Again, it's very general today. I just give you that. Plus, Kelly's looking for what else we can uh, <coughs> leverage from the state. And I think that's the most important thing right now, what we can leverage from the state. Um, and then also, similarly, and this goes back to a conversation the mayor and I had with uh, Secretary of Administration Brennan, what was it, about six months ago, Mayor, at least, would we be willing to put something up if for to help with businesses? And our answer was, well, sure, of course we would. Again, it's a, it's a reservation to see what programs are out there. I don't know what else is going to be out there, but I want to be able to match it if necessary. And that leaves 4125 allocated, reserved, with another million dollars reserving to 1124 to give you more time to see what happens. So you're going to see those things, and um, that's what we're anticipating. So that's kind of my not-so-brief presentation. Um, happy to answer any questions. Uh, this is not set in stone. This, all this is is colorized. You can recolor these any way you want, and you don't have to do it tonight, but feedback would be absolutely uh, welcome. So all of the green are in our CIP or just that top section? The second section was colored by me, not Russ, so don't. The green on the first page are things that we're anticipating in 2022. The green on my page just is because it looks nice. But don't worry <laughs> about the green on my page. <laughs> I seem to recall there were a number of infrastructure things that we talked about um, that had common themes in the, um, I'm sorry, Russ, did you, you look like you were. I'm, I'm waiting for you to. Uh, uh, he's ready. poised. He's ready. <laughs> he's ready to jump. I have some additional comments that I'd like to share if you're, yes. whenever you're ready. Go ahead. So uh, I just wanted to walk you through real quickly and just expand a little bit on the uh, potential uh, infrastructure projects. And I wanted to expand a little bit on uh, the projects in the 22 CIP were things that were not financed. It was identified in our CIP plan, uh, but we didn't have a financing source identified when we did the plan itself. So that's, that's that uh, section that totals $2.6 million, which includes the radios. So that's all in the CIP plan. When we did our capital improvement plan, we had identified the potential of up to $1.5 million in levy supported projects. And when we were given the task of keeping the levy to four to 5%, we said we could no longer afford a levy of 1.5. The, the budget that you adopted has a levy of 1.1, which is about a $400,000 gap. And these are projects that were identified in the capital improvement plan that we need to find financing for because it's no longer included in the levy. So my request for you either uh, whenever it's convenient, hopefully at the next meeting, that those 447,450 uh, dollars worth of projects that were levy shortfall that you would consider 
making that appropriation through ARPA funds. Um, and I also just wanted to speak just a little bit on the IT and security projects. Um, I know we talked about some of these at budget time as well. Uh, they are not included in the budget, but they are projects that we feel are, are worthwhile to proceed uh, soon. And um, I know that we talked about some of the delay in supply chain uh, issues in delivery of goods and, uh, and purchases. So in talking with our IT director, uh, some of those equipments we'd like to get ordered as well as soon as we can. So I would ask for your consideration on those additional 44,000, hopefully at the next meeting if not, you know, or whenever you feel comfortable doing. But I just wanted to highlight those groupings to make sure you understood where uh, they, how they were presented to you this evening. Uh, just a, <clears throat> I guess, clarifying question then. So where we have items under projects for future consideration down below, um, fire hose, museum masonry, museum general purpose room, um, fire station renovations, that's also up under the 2022 levy shortfall? No. Um, when I when I identified projects that could be funded from ARPA through that shortfall, they were projects that had multiple years uh, request. They were like they would buy, you know, so much uh, hose or generators in 22, 23, and 24. Okay. My assumption when I did this is if we're going to consider that to be funded by ARPA in 2022, just to understand that there's a, a future tag along of the similar items in future years. Not asking for approval of those tonight, but those were identified when, when I looked at the levy shortfall projects, they were subsequent years uh, potential allocations that you could consider. So they kind of tagged along, but we don't need authorization or approval for those soon. We could wait until next year to do that. And I think that was part of the direction was to not put anything in that was going to create um, extended um, support beyond. Yeah. So, so that kind of. That's goes, why we separated them too. Because gotcha. it's like, yeah, we, even though they're, if you look programmatically at, a, at the CIP, it's like 22, 23, 24, et cetera. But. The only, the only ones we're going to be spending anytime soon are, are, is what's in the green. And we'll see what happens for 23 and 24 when we get there. And but we're just giving you a radar of where we think it's going to go. For some reason, I thought also that there was reference to the City Hall ADA um, modifications needed in a former discussion or iteration. And I'm, maybe I'm not seeing it here. No, Madam Mayor, I believe that is all. That is already incorporated in the CIP that you adopted. Okay. And it was financed. Okay. So it's it's not an unfunded uh, uh, project at this time. It's all kind of swirling around. I'm trying so. to keep it straight for you. <laughs> but you Thanks. will see when we pr make the presentation on the 14th, you're going to see some stuff over and above what Russ is referring to. There's, you know, our, there is some of the ADA stuff, but there's even more now that we've gotten this presentation so uh, so you'll be seeing that and that's going to be future years that's not going to be you know, it's going to be a pretty sizable amount of money do other council members want to speak to this all right the only other one deputy mayor oh, sorry to cut you off over there city okay. manager. Um, no I think this is this is the next step this is what we we requested whether we directly did or multiple times indirectly, um, we requested this next step that you give us what you and the finance team think are are the you know not necessarily the rough draft because you guys have already gone through several iterations of the rough draft, but what you would present to us as um, strong viable options to use this one-time funding for. So I'd, I'd, I I want to appreciate uh, say thank you for that. I appreciate you guys putting this you know pen to paper and and giving us that. Um, for those at home that that may see this on the screen or or just actually look it up, um, it's not. Uh, I'll be honest, it's not fun to look at. It's not a, a new expansion on, you know, on a library or it's not a, a a big shiny object. This is absolutely funding 
suggested funding for necessary things to support our city staff, to support the city government, and the things that we do on behalf of the people that to, to provide those services that are essential: uh, police and fire, streets, um, making the making sure the you know the water runs and 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 um, and the toilets are able to flush. So that's the type of stuff that um, I'm thankful to see on here. Actually, um, that it's not just a one-time blast and we get to see the shiny object and then and then what? So I'm appreciative of that. Um, I think it gives us a good starting point to, to give you some some feedback. Uh, and I also like the option of repaying the debt to the community foundation on behalf of the, um, um, for the convention center. That that's a the liability that we've had for a while. And that with the massive drop off in room tax dollars and then the unknown for room tax dollars going forward, I don't know how else we will um, support them in getting rid of, you know, getting rid of that cloud that's hanging over the, the CVB and the convention center there. So uh, very supportive of, of doing something along those lines as well. And I guess just to tag on to that too, it's my understanding that that $900,000 repayment will free up the Oshkosh Foundation to do some more direct basic needs type grants that they otherwise might not be able to do. Um, yeah. Is that this came right out of their corpus when they gave us this loan uh, way back when so this will restore that that they could start using it for that basic stuff thank you for bringing that up that was I'm good, that I didn't mention that so I appreciate both of you mentioning it councilmember Miller thank you mayor you you, you covered 90 percent of what I was going to say so thank you but um, it, it, it's huge for us to not be deadbeats to the people that support us um, so getting this paid off quickly, uh, as the mayor and Matt have indicated, uh, they're going to put this money back to work in the community. So I, I don't even view it as, as repaying uh, th th this money. They're going to they're dump this money right back into the community. Um, we, we've cheated them out of revenues and, and interest and everything else. It's, it's time to settle up with these people. Uh, not to mention, I, I think Matt mentioned it, you know, uh, it takes $25,000 a year uh, out of the CVB, you know, indebtedness also. I mean, so this is just a triple win. So uh, let, let's just get the, let's cut them the check ASAP and, and move on and enjoy the benefits of the, of, uh, of the foundation. Thank you. I guess I would just ask to moving forward, if we could identify any of the future documents that um, relate to the public input applications um, so that we know what came from those applications. I was kind of expecting a summary of what those were, um, those individual and those organizational applications, because it's not clear to me in looking at this which ones touch um, those community requests. That's all. Well, most of the dollars, you'll recall, were, were infrastructure related, so they were departments. So those ones I'll spare you on because you pretty much approved those in the CIP. The other stuff I think is totally legitimate and that's where those reservations, eventually we're gonna be coming to you with recommendations. I'm having active discussions with different nonprofits uh, to get more clarification on this. Um, I think there was some nervousness based on uh, emails and calls I got. Uh, I think the, the council members got called, oh, you're allocating the money tonight. No, we're not. It's just, and their applications will be in that either seven hundred fifty thousand or the million eight seventy five, or even the million dollars that we're reserving for a while. But we'll be coming back, and I think that's a great idea to say it came from public input. It came from that. I really appreciate that feedback. Okay. All right. Next, we have council member announcements and statements. Um, I'd like to go first uh, in that we did have a Parks Advisory Board last night. Um, it was rather brief and we will not have a Parks Advisory uh, Board meeting in December unless um, more pressing items come to them. But um, there was some reference to uh, going to a one-year contract with the um, school district over the Pollock Park, uh, Pollock 
water park arrangement. And um, I'd also just like to make an announcement that uh, we do have a handful of board and commission uh, seats available, um, both alternate spots and full seats. And uh, if anyone out there has an interest in stormwater utility, they have gone uh, for quite a while without a full board. Uh, so that's one. And then I believe Long Range Finance. Yes. And, and several others. So yep. please, if you do decide to put your application online, um, that is on the board and commission page. And you can feel free to apply for multiple boards and commissions if you have multiple interests in case one that you're interested in does not have an opening. And I will pass it on to other council members for board and commission reports. Council Member Wojowski. Um, I'll just mention that DEI, they have pushed their meeting back this month um, a week. Um, I believe it's the fifth m Monday of this month. Um, and that's just to allow us to have a conversation with our new uh, uh, Alonzo, who's the who's going to be helping us develop our uh, strategic plan for DEI. So really excited to kind of get that rolling. It will be our first uh, official meeting doing that. So what is the the name of the f new facilitator? Alonzo, I don't know. Alonzo Kelly. Kelly, thank you. Alonzo Sorry. Kelly. Okay. Thank you. Other board and commission reports. All right. Uh, city manager announcements and statements. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, it's a little anticlimactic after you've adopted the big budget, but our third quarter reports are in there. Basically, they're consistent with our projections that are in the budget, so there's really not a lot to report except it's, it's okay. Um, outstanding issues, there's been a handful of updates in there because of um, the budget getting adopted as well as some other things. The facility study, um, you know, we're going to be uh, bringing that to council on December 14th. The landlord-tenant stuff I mentioned earlier, uh, the neighborhood investment grant program. So we'll be working, uh, submitting that to the state. So we're expecting to hear after the first of the year sometime on that stuff. Um, and uh, the uh, DEI uh, uh, KPIs, Mr. Patrick's working on those. Uh, we've, we've got a couple little ideas that might, uh, might change things up a little bit, but still meet the council's goal. Um, and I think, uh, uh, Fitz and um, Michelle will be talking to the DEI committee soon about that. Just Any a question on the transportation utility fee. Uh, when do you expect council will be looking at this? I know there was some time you wanted to get that out in the community. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think the next step is to authorize R.A. Smith to begin doing the, uh, the, the, the meat of the work dealing with primarily business uh, uh, accounts to put those estimates together. Uh, there was mixed reviews at the uh, uh, chamber presentation yesterday, but one of the things that I think came out of that discussion, and Russ was there as well, so he can help maybe shed some light on it, but the transition from uh, a special assessment to fees and where's the cutoff, that's gonna be a huge issue, and I do not have an answer for that. My answer to you is really more about the the technical back room stuff that can get done. Uh, it's just it's just a lot of pulling your sleeve work type of thing. But that policy issue is probably gonna be the biggest thing that'll will that'll challenge council. So that I think we're gonna need to bring. Uh, you know, if we're gonna do this, how do we address that? Because uh, I think you recall those of you who were on council two years ago when it came up. That was well. What about me? I you know, I want to be on the fee side, not the assessment side. And you heard that, and I think that'll be a challenge. So how long do we think it'll take R.A. Smith to do this next step before we... What about, it'll take about three months for them to finalize that, and then it'll be, it, and it may take a few more months to get that, and then it's going to be about the cutoff. When do you cut off? When do you implement it? That'll be the biggest challenge. So three months for R.A. Smith to give you some final numbers and then get the process going, which could take another three months. Yeah, I, the other thing is um, I think uh, Mr. Robbie uh, will be working with R.A. Smith to come back and present a formal uh, request or uh, pro not a proposal, but 
uh, phase two of their work, which is what Mar uh, the city manager was talking about, is you know getting that engagement for the phase two the approach so that he can start looking at utility information on behalf of the city. And I, w I would anticipate that coming up in the next couple of meetings. Okay. And that's all I have. COVID update? Uh, we're just, you know, we're, our numbers are still up. Um, hopeful with uh, uh, juvenile vaccines getting out the door. That's real exciting. Uh, we're still, uh, county still holding vaccination walk in Wednesday at the um, Sunnyview Expo Center and Tuesday mornings, uh, I believe nine to noon at the public library. So wcvaccine.org is the place to get that information if you want a booster shot. And then uh, the school district is also assisting getting information out about the kids getting the vaccines. And I'll just share too, um, this is a little known uh, maybe resource for testing. Uh, if you can't get out, um, but you do have access to email um, or the internet of things, you can request a home test from Department of Health Services. The state will send it to you next day air. I got one. And um, you just do your little test um, via Zoom with some instructions. And it's a prepaid envelope that goes directly back next day air also. And then within, within a couple of days, you've got your results. So similar to the, it is a PCR. Uh, so I just thought I would share that. You can request that home test if you can't work it into your schedule other ways to get over to one of the physical locations. So that's all I have. That's all I have, Madam Mayor. All right, we'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>